Hi, and welcome in to the latest edition of the Power BI Monthly Digest. My name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and welcome back. This episode, we're going to look into the new updates published by the Power BI team at Microsoft for October of 2021. Now, before we get into any of those, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe below to get a full feel of all that what we have to offer here at Pragmatic Works and how we can help you with your daily reporting. Now let's go ahead and jump in to a report and take a look at the new features that have been pushed out in this month's update. So the first new thing that we wanna look at for this month's update is a new layer available in the Azure Maps visual. Now a heat map is now something we can add on top of the other layers we already have within our Azure Maps. Now as a reminder, Azure Map visual is something that's still in preview mode. So if you wanna be able to have access to it, we need to go ahead and make sure we turn that on. So we can go to our file here in our options and settings, and then go into the options. If we scroll on down to our preview features, we wanna make sure that the Azure Map Visual is selected so we can go ahead and use it within our reporting. I'm gonna go ahead and select okay there. And as you can see here, this map that we brought in is looking at post-secondary schools by both latitude and longitude. And the, the default here is we have these bubbles. What we can now do is we can turn on, in our formatting pane here, we can turn on our heat map. If I select the heat map and turn off those bubbles, we can see that we now have this new layer attached to our visual. So if we want to simply just have the heat map by itself, that's what we see in front of us. Now, the heat map is really useful for when we want to visualize comparative data, like comparing performance between different regions or countries, or measuring the frequency of uses or visits to a specific location, or even visualizing the vast statistical and geographical data sets that we might have within our reporting. And so if we look at the formatting pane here, not just having our heat map, but we can really look at changing different aspects within that heat map itself. So I'm gonna focus on the kind of Northeast sector here of the United States as we scroll in with our heat map and looking at our post-secondary schools. One, one thing we can do is we can change the radius size of each of these little areas. So currently I have it set at five. If I wanted to bump that up to 10, you notice that it jumps up and now we have double the size that we had before for our heat map. So we could see a little bit larger, especially from further away, it tends to make it a little bit easier for us to see. We can also go in and change the type of units that is set by. Right now I have it set to pixels, but we can also choose meters if we want it. We can change the opacity and intensity of our uh, heat map itself if you like, and also change the gradient color. Now I've set the gradient color to yellow and orange, and a red. We can change that to any type of color uh, gradient that we would like. I tend to think that our heat map kind of having like a hot fire feel to it and these color schemes tend to look pretty good. And again, as I said, you could add these to other layers that you would want before. So if you wanna have it below other labels, we can have it above, we can have it below roads. We can really play around with how we have this heat map layer attached to our Azure map visual. Now, one of the things to know is that with these Bing maps, now this is a TomTom -tom map, but are the other Bing maps that are associated with Power BI as in our simple map visual as well, there's a now a new tenant level feature that has been pushed out within all of the Bing maps within Power BI. And that feature is to uh, enable or disable that visual entirely. Now, if you go into the admin portal, you can find this option. And so what you'll need to make sure to do is that in the future, as Bing Maps are rolled out even further, they're gonna require an explicit opt-in for new tenants because it's simply disabled by default. Now, however, existing tenants shouldn't really be affected by this, but just know that the option exists to disable the visual. And one of the things to know as you kind of build through and go even further is loading Bing Maps visuals in a context where they've been disabled will simply result in an error which only affects that visual. You will, however, receive a notification when you try to build out that visual to contact your admin in order for them to opt in to be able to use it in the future. 
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at another big push out that came with this October edition of the Power BI update. And that happens to be with our switch function using DAX. Now, one of the big things that we see with this new update is the switch function performance optimization. When the function has a larger number of values, either you know, in the hundreds or more values within the single function itself or when the value expressions contain measure references. So what I have is I've, I've built two different visuals here so we can look at the switch function just as a quick reminder of how it's used and some of the use cases we can use with it. And so our first one here is we have our total sales by month. We just simply built a stacked column chart showing our total sales here by month. But I, what I've done was created a calculated column using switch. And so if you come over here and I'm gonna open that up for us to take a look at, we've used total sales, okay? And then we went and used our date and built a month name using switch. Now, if you notice, all we did was choose another column, the month number of year, and built our switch function into this formula here in order to change every month into the actual word of that month. And what I've done was simply added that into our visual and it chose to sort this column by the contents of another, by our month number of year. Simply done that way, we can go ahead and now choose to have a new calculated column based on an existing one using our switch function. The second way that I've used the switch function is to create a conditional format here within our matrix showing total sales by different countries. So what I've done was created a calculated measure here on our internet sales table all the way down here. If I'm gonna open this up here, called sales level with switch. And so what I did was create, do a switch true formula here that shows that if there's a value greater than 4 million, show it as green, then a, another value greater than 3 million for yellow, 2 million for orange, and 1 million for red, else tan. And what I've done was added that in to our conditional formatting within this matrix for each cell within our total sales column. So if I select this visual and I come into our total sales here, we can take a look at that conditional formatting and in the background color. And so what I've done is, as it loads here, we'll be able to see, is I've chosen to format by field value. Instead of using color scale, I've chosen field value. And from that, I've gone ahead and chosen the measure that I've created, sales level with switch, in order to have this value conditionally formatted. And so now, when we look at this matrix, we can see all of the data, not just in its general format, but also now with this conditional format, having the background color, a, a specific color, depending upon the value that we've set within that cell. All right, and for our last big feature, we see that there's now going to be a new update to Power BI within Teams. Power BI coming in November of 2021 will automatically have their application updated within Teams. That means that if you use Teams on a daily basis, you'll now have access to your reports and your data sets and everything that you have within Power BI service at powerbi.com, including your workspace, within the Teams application. Now, one thing to note, that the rollout for this has already begun. However, tenants can choose to opt out of the automatic update that is now starting to be pushed out into Microsoft Teams. So if you wanna look into that, go ahead and check out your Teams app, go ahead and check out all the other applications within Teams and how you can use Power BI Desktop all within that Teams app that you can share out with others within your organization. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this new update that we have for you for the October 2021 of, uh, edition of Power BI. Please, again, remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. Keep coming on back. We're going to keep pushing out more updates for you every single month, and we really look forward to seeing you in the next one.